Hello friends this is menteachingmen.com. In this video we will be teaching the Gospel of Luke, Chapter 3. The New American Standard and King James Version Bibles will mainly be used for our scripture translation in this video. Please consider giving this video a thumbs up and subscribing to the Men Teaching Men YouTube channel. How to use this teaching? We suggest that you read each chapter before we teach on that chapter. As we are not going to teach line by line, Reading will give you a better understanding of this gospel. Luke is such a great book of the Bible, so stay tuned. To be blessed. Let's first talk about the many great men and women in this chapter. It is packed full. Tiberius Caesar, second Roman emperor, only mentioned once in the Bible. Pontius Pilate, governor of Judea. Herod, tetrarch of Galilee. Tetrarch means the ruler of a principality. Philip. Tetrarch, brother of Herod. Annas. Former high priest. Caiaphas. High priest, son-in-law of Annas. John the Baptist. Son of Zacharias. Luke chapter 3 moves ahead 18 years since chapter 2 when Jesus stays behind in Jerusalem. What does the Bible tell us about these years? Nothing. Luke gives us a picture of the Judean ministry, southern. Rather the other Gospels give us a picture of the Galilean ministry, northern Israel. Luke chapter 3 verse 1. Now in the fifteenth year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, 28 to 29 AD, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea, and Herod was tetrarch of Galilee, and his brother Philip was tetrarch of the region of Iterea and Trachonitis, and Lysanias was tetrarch of Abilene. Luke is a stickler for accuracy. He provides a historical and biblical record. In this verse he lists five Roman officials which we can date when they ruled. Luke chapter 3 verse 2. In the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas, the word of God, Rima, came to John, the son of Zacharias, in the wilderness. Silence from God for the last 400 years. Rima. Only time this word is used in the New Testament. meanings. The voice of the Holy Spirit speaking to us. Or. Guidance we receive from the Holy Spirit at any given time. Both must not contradict God's written word. John the Baptist. 
priest, prophet, preacher. He was a Jewish priest. Last of the Old Testament prophets. Preaches repentance. Luke chapter 3 verse 3. And he came into all the district around the Jordan, preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. Why a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sin? Jesus has not been sacrificed as of yet, and has not shed his blood. Repentance is the first step in receiving forgiveness through Jesus' shed blood. Most important voice in the history of the earth to this point. John's message. Repent. Luke chapter 3 verse 4. John the Baptist speaking. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Luke chapter 3 verses 7 to 9. John the Baptist speaking. He said therefore to the crowds that came out to be baptized by him. You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruits in keeping with repentance. Even now the axe is laid to the root of the trees. Every tree therefore that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Matthew chapter 3 verses 5 to 6. Then Jerusalem was going out to him, and all Judea and all the district around the Jordan. And they were being baptized by him in the Jordan River, as they confessed their sins. John was a no-nonsense preacher. He was not seeker-friendly. Not politically correct. He preached in the wilderness. People had to come to hear him. He suffered the fate of all prophets. Death. Luke chapter 3 verse 6. John the Baptist prophesied. And all flesh will see the salvation of God. All, all, everyone. Luke chapter 3 verse 7. So he began saying to the crowds who were going out to be baptized by him. You brood of vipers, religious leaders, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come. Luke chapter 3 verse 8. Therefore bear fruits in keeping with repentance, and do not begin to say to yourselves, we have Abraham for our father, for I say to you that from these stones God is able to raise up children to Abraham. Luke chapter 3 verse 9. Indeed the axe is already laid at the root of the trees, so every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire.
Luke chapter 3 verses 10 to 11. And the crowds were questioning him, saying, Then what shall we do? And he would answer and say to them, The man who has two tunics is to share with him who has none, and he who has food is to do likewise. Psalm chapter 41 verse 1. Blessed is the one who considers the poor. In the day of trouble the Lord delivers him. Concern for the welfare of the poor is throughout the Bible. Luke chapter 3 verses 12 to 13. And some tax collectors, publicans, also came to be baptized, and they said to him, Teacher, what shall we do? And he said to them, Collect no more than what you have been ordered to. Luke chapter 3 verse 14. Some soldiers, people with authority, were questioning him, saying, And what about us, what shall we do? And he said to them, Do not take money from anyone by force, or accuse anyone falsely, and be content with your wages. John's baptism was a baptism of repentance. What were John's instructions? Crowds Share with the poor Tax collectors Collect no more than ordered Soldiers Persons in authority Don't take money by force. Don't accuse falsely. Be content with your wages. Two of John's instructions sound like issues of today. Don't accuse falsely. Be content with your wages. Luke chapter 3 verses 15 to 16. Now while the people were in a state of expectation and all were wondering in their hearts about John, as to whether he was the Christ, John answered and said to them all, As for me, I baptize you with water. But one is coming who is mightier than I. And I am not fit to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. Luke chapter 3 verse 17. His winnowing fork, Jesus's, is in his hand to thoroughly clear his threshing floor, and to gather the wheat into his barn but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. Luke chapter 3 verse 18. So with many other exhortations he, John the Baptist, preached the gospel to the people. How wonderful for a man of God to give God all the praise and glory and seek none for himself or his family. Luke chapter 3 verses 19 to 20. But when Herod the Tetrarch was reprimanded by him because of Herodias, his brother's wife, Herod married Philip's wife, Herodias.
And because of all the wicked things which Herod had done, Herod also added this to them all. He locked John up in prison. Luke chapter 3 verses 21 to 22. Trinity revealed. Now when all the people were baptized, Jesus was also baptized, and while he was praying, heaven was opened, and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came out of heaven, You are my beloved Son, in you I am well pleased. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Luke chapter 3 verse 23. When he began his ministry, Jesus himself was about 30 years of age. Being, as was supposed, the son of Joseph. Luke chapter 1 verse 35. Being, as was supposed, the son of Joseph. And the angel answered her, Mary, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. The lineage, genealogy, of Jesus comes through Mary his mother, not through Joseph as father, as God was Jesus' father, not Joseph. Luke chapter 3 verses 23 to 38. In these verses, Luke lists the genealogy of Jesus, 77 family members from Jesus to Adam to God. This along with many other documented proofs, verifies Jesus' claim to be the Son of God. Jesus' lineage is so important because it provides proof of his status as Savior, Messiah, King of Kings, Lord, God's Son. In 538 BC, many Jews returned from captivity in Babylon and were not able to provide their genealogy, and were excluded from the Jewish priesthood. Ezra chapter 2 verse 62. 538 BC. These searched among their ancestral registration, but they could not be located. Therefore they were considered unclean and excluded from the priesthood. With the Jewish temple's destruction in 70 AD, documentation is not available to verify others' genealogy. Matthew chapter 24 verse 5. Jesus warned us of the coming of false Christs. For many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and they will lead many astray. Thank you Jesus for the Gospel of Luke that gives us inspiration, hope, and allows us to have a better knowledge of your greatness and glory. Thanks so much for watching. This video is dedicated to the honor of Ms. K. Hawk, Principal, Harrisburg Christian School, Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Hello friends, this is Homer Knox again. I hope you enjoyed this video teaching. The question I have for you is, are you born again? Do you know Jesus as your personal Savior? If not, why not? Why not? Jesus was born of a virgin. He lived a sinless life. 
He suffered and died under Pontius Pilate and the Romans. He was buried and he rose from the dead on the third day. He's now ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. There is salvation in no one else, no one else. And so if this has stirred your heart and you would like to receive Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, please pray with me. Dear Jesus, please come into my heart. Forgive me of all my sins, all my sins by your precious blood. I accept you as my personal Savior. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for cleansing me. Thank you for my home in heaven. Thank you for giving me the Holy Spirit and making me a new creature. Amen and amen. Well, if you prayed that prayer from your heart, you're now born again, you're a Christian. Welcome, welcome to the family. If you prayed this prayer after slipping away, you're now part of the family, you're back in the fold. Welcome, congratulations. There's another teaching on the menteachingmen.com website entitled, I Just Got Saved, and that video will help you with your new walk in Jesus Christ. God bless you, God bless you, amen.